Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Ever After Paper Crafts and this is part two of the video on how I made this card here which is um, a under the sea fun card with this uh, mermaid stamp from Honeybee Stamps. This set is called Swimming By and it is absolutely adorable. I am in love with all the new mermaid sets from Honeybee Stamps. They are all fantastic. So in part one, which and I'll link you to that video in the description box below, I showed you how to do this fun silvery um, beautiful under the sea background with watercolor paints and some silver uh, pearlescent paint on top. So again, I'll link you to that, that video below. In this video, I'm going to do a quick watercolor painting of the mermaid and show you how I did that using my uh, zig markers and a water brush. And I'm trying to show you, it's not going to show up on camera today for me, but there is lots of Wink of Stella on this card as well. And there's also glossy accents on the bottle uh, with, that has a little message in it, just to add some fun finishing touches to the card. Um, but that will show up in uh, the pictures that are on my blog. And I will also link to my blog in the video uh, description box of this video below. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I only used a handful of markers for this particular card, and I'll call them out as we go along. I already went ahead and stamped the image onto Canson XL watercolor paper using my Hero Arts Black Dye ink. This is my favorite ink for watercoloring of any kind, be it, you know, paintbrush and paints or painting with the zigs and a water brush, whatever uh, watercoloring medium I'm using, I reach for this particular ink. Another ink that is um, available as well that works well is Versa Diversifying Black Onyx ink. That works well also, but that one I would recommend hitting it with a heat gun real quick or just waiting a few minutes before you begin coloring because it will bleed. It stays wet just a little bit longer, so it might bleed if you if you start coloring immediately. You don't have to do that with this Hero Arts ink. You can just start coloring uh, right away if you, want it, if you want to. All right, let me go ahead and zoom in just a bit so you can see the coloring a little bit better, and we're going to go ahead and get started. And like I always do, for some reason, it's just embedded in my mind, I guess. I like to start with her hair. I used two colors for her hair. I used dark brown and brown, which is one of my favorite hair combinations. And so as you're working with the zigs, always start with your darkest color first. I'm gonna go ahead and turn her around so my head's not in the camera. It's just a little bit easier when I'm working to um, to color uh, when with the, whatever I'm coloring closest to me. So that's why I tend to turn the image just a little bit. When I'm coloring anything, hair, anything, I like to work in sections. So I just kind of break the hair up into small sections. And so my first section is gonna be from here down to here. And I'm putting my darkest color first, like I said, which is the dark brown. So I'm just putting it where I feel it's going to be darkest. Certainly by the part is going to be darkest. And then there's gonna be a little bit right here at the edge of her head here. She's facing to the right. So the light source I imagine is coming down that way. As you can see, I've laid my zig water brush where I kind of feel like the light source is going to be hitting. So this side of her is certainly going to be lighter than the left side of her. But when it comes to hair, I just tend to kind of follow the little uh, groove marks, the little shadows, indents, whatever, whatever the case may be, that the artist puts in. And so I don't worry too much about light source when it comes to hair. I just, I can see the strands that the artist has drawn in and I just kind of work with that and just imagine where it's going to be lighter and darker if that makes any sense at all. Um, and in the middle is always gonna be where that light source is hitting it directly. So it's going to be lightest. So I just came in now with my brown, which is my second and only other color, to mix it with that dark brown and pull it out. And now I'm using my water brush to pull all, both colors, the mixture that we created, into the center here to really get that nice, beautiful, shaded look. And I'm just kind of going over it um, where those two, where the line of the marker meets the open white space. And uh, using a circular motion or a pushing motion with your Zig water brush will help iron out any harsh lines that you may have gotten when you put the marker down. Uh, if that makes sense, basically all, all you want to do is kind of make that transition from, you know, the darker to the lighter shade. Um, 
less known as, as least noticeable as possible and i found that working that water brush in a circular or pushing motion really gets that line that's created um, with putting down the colors with the markers really irons that line out see what i'm doing here i'm just doing a circular motion to blend the colors together and you don't see a harsh line it's just a gradual transition from darker color to lighter color so hopefully that that makes sense for you guys the next section that i'm going to do and i'm going to turn her upside down just again because it's easier for me with the camera so I don't get my head in the way here and you guys can actually see what I'm doing I'm going to do this section of hair that goes around and comes up so it's going to be darkest of course here where all that hair kind of meets in the middle where the scalp is so I'm going to put some darkness there with the dark brown there's some um, yes dark brown I'm sorry there's some right here it's like there's this hair is on top of this hair you can just see from the illustration so right here is going to be a shadow as well and then of course at the tippy top where all that hair meets it's going to be dark as well so we'll go ahead now and come in with our brown and mix that together with the dark brown and pull it up into the white space that remains so that we get some blending going on here so we're going to want to blend this up here as well and start blending, pushing that color downward into the white space. And now we take our water brush and fill in all this empty space here so that we get a really nice blended look and also work in a circular motion to get that uh, the harsh lines from the markers to disappear. So we just have that beautiful, uh, very subtle blending of color. And I just love that look. So, so pretty. Your, um, your Zig br water brush or whatever water brush that you have really serves like a paintbrush. And you can even do this technique with just a paintbrush and water if you wanted to. If you're going to do that though, I would recommend a very fine tip on your paintbrush so you can really get into those small spaces uh, that, that a lot of these stamped images have. Now I'm just doing a little bit of work on the little curly cue here with her hair at the very tippy top. And now we finally have to do this um, last section over here. So what I'm going to do is just put more marker here of the dark brown, the darkest color, around her face, around her ear here, and then of course up against uh, the where where the kind of the hairstyle ends, so to speak. And again, remember on this far left side of her, it's going to be darkest as well. Make sure you can see that. There we go. So we're just putting our dark marker down. And when we put the color down, we're literally just putting a line of color down. And we're not worried about it being, you know, a beautiful line of color because it's going to be all blended together with our water brush. So what we put down with our marker, nobody cares because we're going to fix it and make it look beautiful by all this blending here with the water. The way these markers react to the water just makes it beautiful and effortless to create really pretty results with these markers. And there you have it. There's her hair just done very quickly there, but you can see how easy that was. Now let's move on to her uh, clamshell little top. And for that, I just used one color. I used marine green. And I just put a little bit of color on either side of the little shells, just a little bit, tiny little bit, scribbling the color on. No magic to how I'm putting it down, literally just scribbling it on. Make sure in between colors, of course, you scribble off the tip of your water brush on a piece of paper towel until no more color comes off of it. That's how you clean it. And you can go from one color to another effortlessly that way. So I always just have a piece of paper towel on my workstation so I can clean it, clean it up. All right, now it's time for her tail. And for that, I use deep violet and violet. And remember, the light source is coming this way. So this left side of her tail is going to be the darkest. So I'm going to turn it slightly this way. It's a little easier for me to reach everything. And I'm going to come in with the darkest color first, which is the deep violet. And we're just going to put a line of this color down right along this left side here of the image where again, it's going to be darkest based on where I have imagined the light source to be. So we put a line of that down. Now we're gonna come in with the light violet and just in a circular motion, blend it with that deep violet color. And just blend, 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 and then pull out as well into the center here where all this white space is. And then we're going to take the water brush here and pull everything out and fill in the remainder of the white space. Easy peasy, so super easy to do this, but just beautiful results, I think. 
for bigger spaces like this, you might sometimes have to give your water brush a little squeeze just to have some extra water come out to fill in the entirety of the space. And that's easy, just squeeze it on your paper towel so some more water's flowing and then spread the ink around that way. But so super easy, it wasn't that easy and the result is just really pretty. Now we'll just do the fins with the same color combo, the, the, um, the deep violet and then the light violet and uh, then the water brush of course. Come in with the water brush to fill in the remainder of the space. Same thing on the other side, the other fin. Coming in with the light violet now. And now of course we'll use our water brush to pull it all out. Now, on the finish card here, I decided I just thought that that was too light to too dark. I just didn't like how it blended. So I went in and just went over top of it again, just to, to um, lessen that kind of dramatic dark to light look. So what's great about the zigs is you can just go right back over top of what you just, the color you just laid down. So I'm putting that deep violet back down again, just right over top of where I just put it. And now I'm taking the light violet one more time again and just blending that with the deep violet here, blending it together, and then take that water brush and pull it all into that empty space, or the white space rather. And it will just darken it up a little bit and make the shading not quite so extreme from, from dark to light. And, uh, and you can do the same thing on the fins as well so that they are a little less dramatic as well. I hadn't used uh, the deep violet to the light violet before. Um, it's a pretty big color jump. So that's why I just decided to go over it one more time and then it wasn't quite as big of a color jump and um, you know made it, made it look a little bit better. So if you wanted to do this and, and you haven't really played with the zigs too much yet, I would recommend just doing violet and light violet instead of the deep violet. I think that would be much easier for you if you're just starting out. But I really did like the end result of this color combination, even though I hadn't worked with it before and it was a little tricky, I liked how it came out in the end. Okay, so there's her little tail. The last thing that we have to do now is her skin tone. And how I do skin tone when I'm doing Caucasian skin is I use flesh color and blush. So I'm gonna start with her face and I'm going to put the darkest color first, which, which is the blush. Again, this left side is going to be darker, darkest because it's the farthest away from the light source. So I kind of put quite a bit of, um, of the blush there and then of course around her hair as well. So we do it that like that, and then we're gonna take some of the flesh color and just blend it with that blush. We don't wanna forget her ear over here. So just blend those two colors together, pull the color up into the white space, and then take your water brush and blend it all together. And there you have it. There you have a really pretty skin tone. Let's just finish up super quick here. We'll go under her neck. Now with watercolor paper, I usually do, um, because it's a thicker paper and these colors, these flesh colors are so light, I usually will paint over it twice, just like I did the tail. So I would just literally go back right over what I just did one more time. I'm not gonna do that for the purposes of the video because I don't want the video to be too, too super long. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind if you are using you know, watercolor paper like I am, you can easily go back over the skin tone one more time and it will um, show up a little bit better. You'll be able to, to see the shading a little bit better than you can just going over it once. And again, that's just because this paper is thicker and these colors are a little bit lighter, so they get absorbed into the paper and the shading is not as uh, dramatic as you might like. So if that's the case, just go over it again, just like we did that, that mermaid tail. Finally, to add some blush to her cheeks, I use almond pink and I just put a little circle on either side of her cheeks. And then I take my water brush to blend that in. And all I do is I just go over the pink, right over top of it in the same circular motion that I laid the marker down, except this time I'm doing it with my water brush. And that just blends it into the cheek without ruining the blending that you've already done um, with your skin tone. So that's it guys, that's our mermaid. And that was quickly colored, very quickly colored, but I think you get the idea of how you can beautifully paint um, these images with your 
zig markers and a water brush so i hope that you enjoy this video and i hope that you will give these techniques a try um i had so much fun painting this mermaid and anyone can do it if i can do it i promise so give it a try guys i'd love to see what you come up with thank you so much for stopping by have a wonderful day and i will catch you in the next video thanks Bye bye